pressure. The pressure is real, you guys. Is being a lawyer harder than being a law student? Hi guys! Welcome to my channel. I'm Tina. I'm a corporate lawyer in the Philippines. So today, we're talking about whether or not law practice, or actually being a lawyer, is more difficult than law school. Is it possible that the process of actually getting to your goal, meaning being a law student, is actually easier than the end goal itself, which is to be a lawyer? Now, before I get into the topic, I want to preface this by saying that these are my own personal opinions based on my currently seven years of law practice. Actually, these are also my husband Mike's opinions because he agrees with me on this. Uy, hindi ko siya Mike is a litigation and regulatory lawyer, by the way. So, is being a lawyer harder than being a law student? Let's start with what people commonly think the answer to that question is. People see lawyers on TV all sparkly and shiny and smooth talking and well dressed, and they think, wow, it must be so easy to be a lawyer. Chicken! Ah. That's what I used to think myself as well, before I actually became one. I remember actually during the night of our law school graduation party back in 2012. There were some UP Law upperclassmen there who were just a year above us in UP Law. So since my batch had just graduated at that time, those upperclassmen were very new lawyers, as in first-year lawyers. I was talking to one of those upperclassmen who was working in Accra, which is one of the biggest law firms in the country, and I remember telling her, Wow, it must be so great being a lawyer na, your problems are over. And what she told me, I never forgot. She told me, no, it's not like that at all. Now we just have a whole new set of problems. And at the time, I really couldn't understand what she meant. She was already a lawyer. She had already reached the end goal. How could she have problems? I just didn't get it. And so I just tucked that memory away in the corners of my mind and forgot about it until now. And why did I remember it now? It's because today, as a practicing lawyer, I completely and absolutely understand what she means. So clearly, the short answer to the question, is law practice harder than law school, is a resounding yes. It may be different for you. Maybe you'll find law practice a breeze. And if you do so, good for you. I mean, pat on the back. Although you would be the exception. But yeah, I think that most lawyers would agree with my answer to this question. Yes. Being a lawyer is more difficult than being a law student. Why is that so? Let me count the ways. Let's go reason by reason. The first reason is the scope. In law school, your scope is limited to your coverage for the day. Your scope is limited to the four corners of those cases or codals or your textbook for that particular subject. You are assigned material and that material is literally your only scope. Your professor says, study these provisions, read this chapter of your textbook, read these cases, and that's literally your only scope. That is the scope from which you will be asked questions. And you won't be asked questions outside that scope, well, unless your professor is a sadist. So you see, in law school, the scope that you're concerned with is so well-defined. In law practice, however, oh, <laughs> if your scope in law school is this, then your scope in law practice is this. If you're a litigation lawyer, then literally any topic about any matter falling under the litigation umbrella can be thrown at you. If you're a corporate lawyer naman, then you would be expected to answer literally any question about literally any topic that a corporation could ask you. So in and of itself, it's just so incredibly broad. Sometimes I actually liken it to finding a needle in a haystack. Not gonna lie, it can get really, really difficult. And regardless of what type of lawyer you are, you best believe that a majority of the questions that you will get asked in legal practice, you did not take in law school. This is simply because in law school, you gain only super super general knowledge and not the specialized knowledge about specific legal areas which you will need to answer many questions in legal practice. Now this is a topic for a separate video but I'm just gonna say it quickly here. Law school does not prepare you for law practice. I'm sure that most practicing lawyers would agree with me on this. In law school, you study the laws per subject, right? But you only study what? The codal provisions for that subject, the cases, the commentary. But, and here's the but. In law school, they don't discuss the many, many specialized laws and issuances which would apply to your client down the line. Given the sheer volume of those specialized laws and issuances, it would just be impossible to tackle all of them in law school. For example, sure, you know the general law on sales. 
but you don't know the intricacies of the Consumer Act. Sure, you know that there's a 60-40 foreign equity restriction if you want to get into the energy business, but you don't know the Renewable Energy Act. You don't know Energy Regulatory Commission or ERC Resolution Number 16, Series of 2014, which talks about securing certificates of compliance for self-generating facilities. You don't know DOE Department Circular Number 2019-10-0013, which are the omnibus guidelines governing the award and administration of renewable energy contracts. By the way, I work in energy, so totoong examples yun. <laughs> na na lang ako na may issuances na ganun. And issuances like that are continually being passed and implemented and issued, and you don't take them up in law school. Like I've said before, in law practice, you will apply only like 10% of what you've learned in law school. The rest of the 90%, you learn in law practice. In law school, they don't discuss the many, many issuances of the many, many regulatory agencies which you will be dealing with once you're a lawyer. I've mentioned in my previous videos just some of the many different regulatory agencies in the Philippines. As a lawyer, whether you work in a law firm or a corporation, you will be dealing with so many of these agencies whose rules, issuances, department circulars, department orders, memorandum orders, memorandum circulars, opinions, etc. You do not know and you never took up in law school. When you're in law school, your professor will ask you, Ms. Amador, what is Article 21 of the Civil Code? But in law practice, the questions that your client will ask you are not, Attorney, what is Article 315 of the Revised Penal Code? It's never that simple. Rather, clients will come to you with a set of facts and a problem. And it's up to you to figure out what law or IRR, meaning implementing rules and regulations, or issuance or order of whatever government agency applies to that problem. To give you guys an idea of some of the questions that I've dealt with, I'm gonna flash on screen some real legal opinions which I've worked on as a lawyer. Of course, with the details redacted for confidentiality purposes. Yup, <laughs> struggle best. In my experience, that's really the hardest part, is figuring out which law or governmental issue wants to apply. Occasionally, if you're lucky, <laughs> then the question can be answered by the general provisions of law which you've already learned in law school. However, most of the time talaga, you have to sort through all these twisted, convoluted facts to figure out what the issue even is in the first place. Second, to answer the legal question, you will have to research through countless case doctrines and governmental issuances, which again, you did not take in law school. That is the most difficult part talaga of researching. It's really combing through all of these government issuances, some dating back to even decades ago. And what makes it even more difficult is because we're in the Philippines, generally government websites are really not reliable as search engines. Most of the time, their online databases of issuances are really incomplete. In some websites, there are links to the issuances. So yon, kala mo link, gagana, click mo yung link. But it turns out, wala palang link. Bokya. <laughs> On other websites naman, you click the link expecting to find the actual document or the actual issuance. But it turns out, it's only a summary of that issuance. Other government agencies naman only upload the issuances from a certain year onwards, like 2001 onwards. So if you need an issuance from 1998, then good luck na lang sa'yo. You're gonna have to go to the agency and look through their archives. So in law practice, trust me, <laughs> You will encounter so many new matters that you never even heard about, much less studied in law school. In law school, you only get a very, very tiny itty bitty picture of what you will actually encounter in law practice. The next reason why law practice is harder than law school is what is at stake. When you're a law student, what is at stake? It's your life, your grades, your stay in law school, your future as a lawyer. You are accountable only for yourself. Now, when you're a lawyer, what is at stake? If you're a litigation lawyer, then it's your client's liberty or assets or personal reputation. If you're a corporate lawyer, then it's your client's assets, whether real or personal property. It's business reputation, it's goodwill, it's business operations, it's compliance with governmental or regulatory authorities. If you're a labor lawyer for the employee, then it's your client's job and consequently his or her livelihood. If you're an intellectual property lawyer, then it's your clients' copyrights, trademarks, patents, which it needs in commerce and which oftentimes are actually more valuable than tangible property like real and personal property. So when you're a lawyer, clearly what is at stake is not just your grades, not just your future. What is at stake is someone else's future. That is actually a terrifying thing, don't you think? It's so much responsibility. So when you finally become a lawyer, the stakes increase. They go from this 
<laughs> to this as in it skyrockets overnight. Whether your client is a natural or juridical person, a human being or a corporation, a farmer or a CEO, a sole proprietorship or a multinational company, the stakes are high. The next reason why law practice is more difficult than law school is the consequence of failure. If you fail when you're a law student, only your law school life is on the line. If you fail a subject, you have to figure out how to move forward. If you fail out of law school, then you decide if you transfer law schools or you just stop law school altogether. On the other hand, when you're a lawyer, if you screw up a client's appeal, your client could be thrown in jail for the rest of his or her life. If you mess up a filing deadline, then your client could have its assets worth hundreds of millions of pesos sold at a public auction. If you fail to add just one phrase in a contract, just one very very short phrase, like for example, failing to qualify the meaning of force majeure, then your client could be made liable for liquidated damages worth billions of pesos. If you forget to monitor implementation of a signed contract, then your client or your company could get sued for breach of contract and ordered to pay millions of pesos in damages. If you forget to comply with the repertorial requirements which you have to file with your client's regulator, meaning the government agency which regulates your client's business, then your client could be assessed penalties and fines worth millions of pesos. Those are just some of the ways you can screw up <laughs> as a lawyer. I'm not trying to scare you, not at all. That's just the truth. There is a lot at stake. Lawyer guy, your client's fate will really hinge on your and your boss's competence as lawyers. And aside from those consequences to your client, if you mess up, of course there would also be consequences within that law firm or company or office wherein you work. Bosses talk amongst themselves. As in you parang, Oi, si associate ex tamad, he doesn't submit good work. You know, things like that. And what's the consequence of that when your bosses trade notes like that? Of course, if your superiors trust you and they know that you submit good work, then they will assign to you the high-profile accounts and the big-ticket transactions. If your superiors don't trust you, naman, then of course they're gonna try to keep you off those high-profile big-ticket transactions because they don't wanna risk screwing up that case or that account. They don't wanna lose that client or that account. So you see, if you mess up as a lawyer, you don't just jeopardize a client's life or a corporation's assets. If you keep messing up, then you could actually sabotage your own professional opportunities and reputation. This is not to say, of course, that your bosses won't give you a bit of leeway to make mistakes when you're a new lawyer. They do, but only when you're a new lawyer. As you get more senior in practice, they're not quite as forgiving. So messing up as a lawyer is professionally embarrassing. Like I said earlier, the stakes are high. The next reason why law practice is more difficult than law school is the pressure. When you're in law school, the pressure comes from the fear of being humiliated by your professor in front of your classmates, right? There's that fear of getting humiliated, of failing a class, of that cinco if you're from UP Law. When you're in law practice, I know that you're thinking, ah, since we're lawyers now, we won't be graded anymore. Grades are just for students. I hate to break it to you guys, but when you're lawyers, your workplace performance is still graded. In the law firm, you're ranked based on billable hours. There are also awards for those top performing associates. In companies, it's the same thing. You're also still graded and evaluated by your bosses. For example, some of you guys know that I used to work in the mother company, and now I work as head legal of one of the subsidiaries of that mother company. In the mother company, all corporate lawyers were graded based on two factors. First was the quality of our work, and number two was the timeliness of our submission of work. The litigation lawyers had a different metric, it was something like number of cases disposed of. But anyway, every quarter, our grades, as in the grades of the almost 40 lawyers at the mother company, were flashed on screen from highest to lowest for all the other lawyers and the admin staff to see. So if you were at the bottom of the list, and the grades aren't just grades. They're the basis for deciding the amount of your salary increase or whether or not you get promoted. Like for example, I'm gonna share a little bit about my job. It was last year that three of us, so three corporate lawyers from the mother company, were assigned to three different subsidiaries of the mother company. And the thing there is, we weren't just chosen randomly. We were handpicked based on our grades. So the pressure... The pressure is real, you guys. And all the more so because our personality as lawyers and law students is really type A. We are competitive, sometimes with ourselves, sometimes with other people. We're driven. We're not content with giving anything less than our best. So when you have that type of personality with that type of workload, with that kind of pressure thrown in the mix, then it's really a perfect storm for work anxiety and stress. The next reason is accountability for negligence. When you're a law student and you flunk an exam or you bungle a resit, who is to blame? Ikaw, diba? I mean, unless you had a terrible, terrible bout of bad luck, who else's fault could it be? But when you're a lawyer and you mishandle a case, 
you can get administratively sanctioned if the court finds that you were grossly negligent. If you give a wrong legal opinion based on erroneous research, then you're gonna have a lot of explaining to do before your boss. If you have good bosses, then they're going to take the blame from the client for your wrong answer. But of course, between you and your boss, sobrang nakakahiya, di ba? <laughs> Bad shot ka na. So it's really not good if you make mistakes a lot. Pressure! The next reason why law practice is harder than law school is the hours. When you're a law student, your law school life is confined to your class hours, right? Outside from that, you're free from the evil clutches of your professor. But when you're a lawyer, you're on call 24-7. If someone from work vibers you a legal question, then you have to answer it kahit Sunday pa yan. If your boss sends you an urgent contract to review, then you have to drop all the other tasks that you scheduled and prioritize the review of that urgent contract. So when you're a lawyer, regardless of where you work, a lot of the time, your time isn't completely yours. So that's it guys! I hope I answered your question about whether or not law practice is more difficult than law school. Yes, law practice is more difficult than law school. But the good thing about it is that if you're so miserable, if you feel like you're not living life anymore, then you have the freedom to just get up and switch jobs. You can't do that in law school while expecting to pass that subject. You can't be like, you suck ma'am, I quit. Yeah, don't be fooled by the lawyers that you see on TV with all that swag, all that confidence. That's the glamorized part of law. It's rarely ever like that in real life. It's hard. It'll make you want to tear your hair out sometimes. And like I always tell Mike, it will take years of your life. The stress will cut years of your lifespan. But after the most difficult, stressful, challenging moments, if you do well, then you're gonna feel incredibly proud of yourself and of your work. And it's really those work wins, whether small or big, which make the difficulty worth it or at least bearable. Besides, I think as lawyers and law students, there's a masochist in all of us. If we want the good, then we have to be prepared to go through the bad and the ugly. <laughs> so yeah guys, that is it. That's it. If you learned from this video, then please give it a thumbs up. Please also don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to hit the notification bell below so that you guys never miss a future video. Thank you so much for watching, stay safe, and see you in my next video. Bye! Hola amigos! Yo soy Pancho. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, there. Yay! <laughs>